Some more examples. And for those of you with short you know, span of memory or memory or how you call it, this is what we just discussed. So I explained a bit about the history, explained a bit about that we actually started using desktops. And I showed you the first example or the search suggestion example, which we've, you know, which was one of the first things we did uh, using our Hadoop cluster and which we have extended and expanded ever since. Some more examples. Operational big data. The use case is that we want to show all relevant pricing delivery options for a specific product. Meaning, you know, if you look at this, if you look at this picture, it's perfume. Eh? It's Christmas time, so you know, perfume. Many people are buying perfume. I mean, you can actually see that we have multiple offers available. So you can buy this product from, you know, delivered by Ball.com. But we also can, you know, we have partners like Dogisterij Wil or Dogisterij.net or whatever. They also can have that product available for a specific price for our customer under their own conditions. And the offers, because now you see three offers for this product, but think about the study books, you know, during the time that people, students like yourself, start selling the old books and buying new books, you see actually products like a study book with maybe 100 alternative offers, all secondhand. So we need to be able to serve the data really fast. And of course, we limit it. I'm not sure what the limit is currently, if it's 50 or 100 or 25. Of course, we limit it, but we need to be able to offer that, you know, to show the data really, really fast. So we actually move to this type of architecture. Again, pretty, pretty simple. And those are the simplified pictures, just to be clear. Uh, on the left side, we have the old Oracle database solution, which is actually used to calculate the offers, because there are all kinds of algorithms behind. And those are pricing, al pricing algorithms, you know, what is the margin that you want to have for that product? You know, what is the, uh, uh, you know, what, what do our competitors do? Uh, whatever. So that's on the left. And that system is actually used, for instance, by internal users or by other systems. But if you look at the right, uh, our website, I mean, we don't request the price directly from, you know, from the Oracle database. We now, what we do is whenever we change the price for a specific product, we publish the data to our MongoDB, to our, to our, yeah, to our SLI, or SLI uh, solution. This SLI is the name we've given it, based on MongoDB. So we make it available, and the only thing the SLI does is, you know, I request a pr a, a, a all the offers for a specific product, and it just gives me back those offers. Very simple, that's the only thing it does. No logic, no calculations, no pricing algorithms, just offer, you know, or offer, yeah. Just present data really, really fast. And you can see it actually, I mean, we can see it from the st stats on our website that after you introduced it, it was much faster. You know, it's, 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 an, you know, it's a difference of milliseconds, which is huge if you look at uh, web shop performance. Second analytical big data example. Yeah, so we saw an example for analytical big data search rank or search suggestions. We saw the other one for on an operational point of view for our pricing uh, solution. And now we are looking into personalization. The use case is that every customer has his own personal website. So what you see will be different from what you see, what will you see? I don't think this animation completely works, but if you look at our website, at for instance, at every page, but also the home page, you see slots, and in those slots we have personalized offers, personalized content. So again, how does it look like? I mean, we have some batch tools to prepare uh, the, uh, the personalization uh, routines, the personalization offers. Um, uh, but also we, uh, we want to have it influenced by real-time behavior. So what I'm trying to say is if you're a user and you're browsing our system, I mean, based on what you're doing, we want to give you, you know, all the recommendations than we would have given you if you would have just started browsing. So we've uh, moved or we've decided to implement the Lambda Lambda, whatever you call it, Lambda, Lambda architecture. Yeah. Probably some of you have had it as well uh, at, uh, at your study. Uh, but the Lambda architecture actually consists of three layers. So you have the batch layer. So the batch layer on, on, you know, on the bottom, that is all the number crunching. And actually that's based on, uh, well, at least in our case, we use, uh, we use uh, MapReduce combined to, uh, on Hadoop to do that. You have the serving layer, which is our campaigning system. 
serving the campaigns to the webshop. And we have the partial speed layer, so the third component of the Lambda architecture. The speed layer actually tries to um, yeah, uh, record all the things you do within a session. And that's really important. It only keeps track of the data within a session. Yeah. So by combining like the real-time component together with all the batch processing we've done, you know, we're doing during the night, we want to be able to give the customer the best experience yeah, he or she wants to have. Yeah, this is on high level what it is. Um, not diving into this, but what you actually see, if you look at our architecture, is that we're really pleased, but it has a big downside. The big downside is that it's difficult for us to influence or to change recommendations based on, not on the browsing history of a specific customer in a session, but based on what all kinds of customers are doing at the same time. That says here. Yeah, so we have really limited su support in the current architecture for real-time al analysis over sessions. And as you can imagine, I mean, you know, especially at this moment, we have thousands of users browsing our system, looking for Christmas gifts and buying Christmas gifts, hopefully. Um, but we don't, we have no, you know, we don't really have a good way to compare the current behavior of our customers uh, um, uh, over multiple sessions. So we want to change that. We want to change that by adding another component. And I've only drawn it like this because we're still building it. We're experimenting. We're actually we are using it to some extent. Um, but I don't want to dive in too much detail because this is pretty, uh, well, it's important for us, but also other people might be interested in it. But we're actually adding a component called Puzzler, where we want to compare multiple, yeah, the multiple sessions next to each other. And not only that, I mean, based on the behavior, based on what actually converts better, yeah, but uh, ba based on what, uh, yeah, which, which personalization works best, you want to be able to change the recommendations on the spot. And why it's important is that, I mean, you all know the concept of A-B testing, I think. Yeah, you have two variants of the same. A-B testing is great, but it's all, you know, usually one variant is much better than the other, or at least better than the other. And actually means that if you've been testing for a month, that you have lost maybe some customers or maybe some money because the B variant was not so good, but we still given it to half of our customers, which in hindsight you know, might have not been the best idea. You want to do it because you want to compare, but the sooner you can adjust, the better it is. And that's what you want to do with Puzzler. You want to be able to adjust the recommendations based on what's currently happening. I understand that those examples are pretty high level, and they're diff but it's pretty difficult to dive into those within 10 minutes. But hopefully I can give you a bit of flavor. The last example on operational big data again is pretty much similar to the price, but now for product information. If you are looking at a product, those essential spanner set, vier delig. I don't know what it is in English. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you if you look if you look at the, you know, the product description and the characteristics, the product specification, it's similar to the price, but you usually don't have multiple product descriptions for one product, but it's more extensive. So we just have more data to publish to the website, and we use a similar architecture. You know, if you would request, you know, the web shop the webshop does a request to the product and content service, and that publishes the data to the webshop. This is a bit more complex than the former one. And it's not like the former one is not as complex, but the former one was a simplified picture, you know, the slide and the pause. So this is more how it looks like. And it's, it's difficult to read, but if you are browsing uh, our site and you want to see the details of a specific product, you click on it and actually a REST call goes to the PCS solution, which is again based on MongoDB, and it publishes the content really, really fast to our web shop. And then you know, on the on the back or on the background, not on the back, but on the background, actually, the PCS data is kept in sync with all the mutations that are currently that are continuously happening on product data. No, I realize it was short. I realize it's difficult to bring a message across what we are doing. Hopefully, I have been able to give you some insight on where we use big data. And if you're really interested, I mean, either come to me or yeah, better, I mean, you might come to Bold.com in the future. Um, it is that we've been using big data solutions for many years. You know, as you've seen, we started in 2007, 2008. So we've, you know, we've, we've, we've been there and you're still doing that for both analytical and operational type of solutions. 
So we started with analytical. For the last couple of years, we've moved more to operational type of solutions. And we keep on experimenting to improve what we have. That's the way how we like to work. You know, we run an experiment, and based on what we learn, you know, we build upon that. So we keep on doing that. That will never change. You know, we keep on experimenting and learning. Um, but the big challenge for us is to move to much more, even much more real time. And that has its own challenges from an architectural point of view, but also from a conceptual point of view. So it's fun, but so it's not so easy. I think that's the bell of the end of the, <laughs> the 10 minutes. <laughs> One more slide, actually two more slides. So for <laughs> big data is no hype. You know, ex this is, you know, we are a website and we do get uh, prizes. This is the prize we got about a year ago, Thuiswinkel Awards. It actually was specifically stated that yeah. thanks to applying customer profiling and big data, we've been offered, I mean, you know, we've been offered the prize. So that's nice to hear. That is not just we, be that be, you know, we believing that we can serve our customers better, but also that, you know, yeah, the outside world's world has recognized it. And of course, we have jobs available. <laughs> Thank you.